in this week's video, as well as the next few videos kind of come along, I'm going to follow a different style to the first video I did. So last week I did session one, which was squats, bench, and a few other exercises like incline, dumbbell press, chest support, T-bar rows, and D-handle pull down and hollow holds. Reason why I'm looking down here is I have my program all in front of me, so I know what I'm talking about. However, I think the best way of doing it is going to be, as it's a video per week, um, we are now three weeks out of comp. Instead of just videoing one session, I'll be videoing across the board. So if I train four times a week, I won't do every single exercise, like every everything, but I'll probably do like the major things and the the things that like I can track progress with, like so squats, bench, and deadlifts, as well as some accessories just to show you what I'm actually doing in my sessions and not just show you one session a week. Now, going back to this week as a whole. So, this week was actually very good. So, I took 127.5 kilos as a top set on squats, low bar, for a single. And that moved quite nice, RP7, so basically an opener. Um, so, if I can open with 127 plus, I mean, really on comp though, but you know, that could change... Um, depending on fatigue, how, how I'm feeling on the day, um, nerves. It's not a big comp, but just going to a competition can be a very nervous thing to do. So I'm going to be very dynamic and not be too fixated on numbers. I'm just going to enjoy the comp. And also with my RDLs, I got to 140 kilos for 10 reps, top set at RP6. Pretty, really good. It's really good actually for me. Only thing I'm a bit confused about is last week I took 155, I want to say. 157, no, 155 for a top single deadlifts RP8, which I was meant to do an RP6. So I overshot by two. I don't know what happened. Deadlifts has always been a really strange lift for me. So I had my good days and bad days. But to be fair, last week was my first time I ever used calibrated plates for a full session which is a very different different thing. So the reason why calorie plates are different to normal steel plates and um, bumper plates are down to multiple factors. First of all, one of them is calorie plates are in around about 10 grams of the of the weight it says it is. So 25 kilos, it is round about 25 kilos precisely. Whereas steel plates and bumper plates can be off by a fair margin, like one kilo, two kilos. I've seen some bumper plates off by a stupid amount, which is fine. Like when training, you don't, that doesn't matter. But when you add that up to a higher number, like if you've got like four or five plates, red plates, it's going to feel heavier. But the other thing is, when you try and pull the slack out of the bar with a calibrated plate, the distance between the bar and the plate is non-existent practically. So when you try and pull the slack, there is no sl slack to pull or very little slack to pull. Whereas bumper plates and steel, steel plates usually have a fairly wide gap between them. So with my training, I follow periodized program as I've said previously. Per period periodized program, by the way, isn't um, a type of program. It's just the way it's set out. Um, most powerlifting, not most, pretty much every single powerlifter follows it. So with my training, I split it into four days. As I train four times a week, my, my coach splits it out into the following. Monday, session one is primary day, deadlift, and no, squat, sorry. And it usually is primary day bench, but that can vary depending on what we're doing, like comp. We might swap it down to like session three, no, four, sorry. But we have been, we've been keeping it quite consistent and keeping primary day session one. Session two, it's more of a moving pattern based. Uh, they're trying to manage fatigue in a sensible way. So we have some tempo stuff. So like three, two, zero, tempo bench, followed by two count pauses and stuff on bench as well. Uh, just to get the moving pattern in, practice the pause commands for comp as well. It's just in general, even when you're off season, you want to try and uh, replicate a competition environment as much as you can and keep the same standards all year round really. And also on that day, do some comp deadlifts, which is very light. It's like an RP6, 5, even 7 some days, depending on where we are. 7, I've never seen it on my um, secondary deadlifts ever, but I assume one day we'll probably get up there. And then my most boring session is the squats primary day, no, secondary day, sorry. 
and that is literally three sets of three, probably around about 110 kilos, 100, 100 kilos, uh, roughly sitting around about RP65 most sessions. My favorite session is probably session four, when we do comp bench, very high volume. Well, we've dropped the volume recently because of what we're coming up. So I've had back issues with deadlifts for a good while, for the first eight to nine months of powerlifting, I would say it got really bad. I got to some stages when I couldn't even walk after my deadlift sessions. So, and by the way, this is only deadlift 110 kilos, four or five reps when I just started powerlifting. And yeah, it got to a stage when I came home and I couldn't even like put my shoes on, couldn't open the dishwasher, do anything like that, put socks on, it was really bad. I went to physio, that didn't help work or anything like that. So. Me and coach had like a good look at my what was going on, what was the issue. It took ages to figure out what it was and to this day we still do not know what it is precisely. However, my back issues have been fixed, which is really good. Um, I've been deadlifting three, four months now with no back pain, zero back pain, which is brilliant stuff. It could be down to multiple reasons. For instance, the volume was too high for me because I just started deadlifting because I'm before powerlifting and never deadlifted before. Or incorrect technique right at the start first few weeks first month let's say and i'll probably say the biggest thing i personally think it was is i used more the posterior chain right in contrast to my legs when deadlifting i used to um deadlift very stiff legged which is fine now because i have built up to it i've practiced to it by the start i don't think my lower back was going to deal with it even though i look at the videos now and my Form was never wrong. I had a flat back. It, it could be down to multiple things. So yes, I've been powerlifting for a year exactly this week. I think anyway, three, three cycles of 16 weeks. Maths might be wrong there. But anyway, in that period of time, I had been powerlifting for a fair amount of time. My progress hasn't been all round linear for the first six to eight months, let's say, with the deadlift. My bench and squats have, so, been pretty consistent overall. My bench has been exceptionally well. I don't know why, because I don't think I'm built for deadlifts. Um, like my limb, my, my limbs are very long. I've got a fairly small chest for a bencher. The yeah, overall, yes, my, my progress hasn't been super fast or hasn't been to the traditional influencer style like David Laid when he, like 16, 17, 18, pulling like stupid amounts of weight. We are all different, but I'm trying to show you the the real picture of how my training comes along and where I've started to now and where I'll be in a few years time, months and so on. I'm going to be playing the slow game and keep my training consistent. Don't want any injuries like anyone, obviously, um, but I'm going to keep at it and hopefully good things happen. So yeah, overall, that's the end of this video. I will see you in the next.